wars, poverty, climate change. But forget all that, because one of the more pressing issues many countries are noted to facing is of course Generation Z, and Japan is no different. So exactly what problems are the land of the rising sun facing with their Gen Z? Well, that's what we're going to explore in this video. In many aspects, the Gen Z of Japan share the same kind of characteristics as Gen Z in most parts of the world. They're digital natives, growing up in a world where the internet already existed, and during the rise of social media. Part of what this means is younger Japanese people are used to obtaining raw information about what is happening in Japan and around the world. Previous generations were, and many still, are used to gaining their information from traditional forms of media like newspapers and TV. In fact, Ooh, I, I can translate this. So previous generations were hardcore indoctrinated and the Gen Z have a better pulse on what life is. <clears throat> My sensor on the bright check. In fact, a huge reason why traditional media is still thriving in Japan is simply because there aren't as many young people with the average age being around 49, making Japan's population. Yeah, but you can, we can't just ignore the wisdom of the, the forefathers. It's like, oh yeah, I'm hardcore indoctrinated. Let's just do what I what worked in my time. Just go into the company, just just follow the, the good path, and it's it's gonna be fine. Everything's just gonna be fine. Just just work there for like 60 years and uh, you can retire and uh play basketball with me like hundred years. <clears throat> the oldest in the world. However, as many might have already known, traditional media is often quite selective on what is reported and tends to spin stories in a particular way. No way! I would have never guessed that uh, mainstream media was a uh, total propaganda. Way, ...depending on their audience base. What this has resulted in is a communication divide between Gen Z and previous generations on a range of topics. However, we are seeing a rise in more older Japanese internet users within more recent years. But let's get to the main issue which is typically brought up when talking about Gen Z. Work. Japanese society is heavily centered around working, and nothing beats social credit like being a full-time employee, aka Seishine, in a top company. Japanese company... Yeah, but that... This... This... I actually pondered about making a video about this, because society makes a bunch of dumb bullshit. It's like, oh yeah, you know, that is status, you know? You know, there's nothing higher status for a guy than, like, perishing in glorious combat. And like, oh uh, yeah, they just, they just want you to be a total sucker, right? And like, oh yeah, just joining a company. No, I, I don't completely dismiss it. Like, you know, I mean, joining a, a job, and that could be completely fine, but like, most people are forced into this situation and there are many 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 things they are forced into that they don't want to be part of that they wouldn't be part of and that doesn't mean that they don't want to be contributing but they are forced into a situation that that they wouldn't take and you can you can see this that those with greater means uh readily follow this uh path <clears throat> Company practices also typically require a level of commitment that goes beyond the job description and being active in trying yeah. to get your boss to like you so you can climb the corporate ladder, which is also assumed to be something you want to do. Something else I don't usually hear about with Yeah, I, I don't care about that. Videos that discuss Japanese working culture. I mean, they, they could be fine, right? But it should not be a requirement. <clears throat> Is the view older generations take that company members are like family, where you'd be given a role like being the big brother or sister. This is actually used as a method to stop new grads from suddenly quitting by letting their senior, yeah. aka senpai, be someone they can go easily talk to. But we'll talk about the quitting issue in just a bit. But it's not just that. It's not just trying to build some kind of a, a messed up family, try to prevent people from quitting, but actually establishing some kind of hierarchy. Because like, okay, you want to establish a hierarchy? I am God. And you're a, a tiny wooden sand who served me. Like, okay, we established a hierarchy. Or, I mean, you know, I could be the, the, the dad and you could be the good for nothing kid, right? Established a hierarchy there. So, not a problem. So, it does depend. I mean, there is more to the situation. Bit. Overall, the expectation for Japanese companies is that you'll stay within that company for life, being moved into different departments at the company's convenience. However, many of the Gen Z in Japan are seeing work differently, seeing it as just a place to work. I know, shocking. This has led to complaints from superiors that they aren't able to communicate and bond anymore with those below them, as many younger workers aren't as keen on chit-chatting and also refuse to go out drinking with their boss after work, preferring to prioritize their private time. Not only that, a big... Also, you might just not like drinking at all, right? Reraku kudasai, suku kita kudasai, hi. Yeah. I mean, what I would recommend is that Outside of work, you just you're just not available. You you actually make it a thing on your phone. <laughs> it might not be po it might not be uh, popular though. So uh, th that's not my problem. But I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, at least one thing you want to do is that when you sleep, you you want to make sure that you can receive calls, right? I mean, at least you can compromise on that. I mean, if you are expected to receive calls outside of uh, well expected hours, then at least you should be compensated. But at least you shouldn't be. Uh, accepting calls when you should be sleeping. That's just unacceptable. <clears throat> A big complaint about Gen Z when it comes to communication within the workplace is that they're too sensitive. Reasoning for this is the notable increase in the types of haras there are. Har I think that's all bullshit. Hara meaning harassment. The most common type of hara you are bound to hear about is sekuhara, which stands for... Damn, these, these sensitive wallflowers? What the fuck? 
sexual harassment. But now, different Taras are constantly popping up, and many attribute this to Gen Z. For example, you may- What? And many attribute this to- Vakir Mashta? Gen Z. For example, Yumehara. Yume meaning dream. Now, some of you might be scratching your heads wondering, what kind of harassment exactly is that? Essentially, this is when your boss or senpai asks you about your dreams, as in what you aspire to do. Some yeah, that, that's just bullshit. I mean, you're supposed to be saying, oh yes, I want to be working at this company until the day I die. I I plan to serve you, master. That, that's pretty much what they're looking for. It's like, oh, you know, you know, I want to start my YouTube thingy on the side. It's like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's so cool. It's like, boom, this guy fired in two weeks. <clears throat> Some preferring to just not talk about their dreams or just not having any dreams in the first place. Feeling that they no, you just lie. No. They just lie. Put on the spot. What also counts as Yumehara is when those superiors talk about their dreams. Basically because the younger workers don't really care. There is also another trait about Gen Z. <laughs> that's, that's honest. Also, that's bullshit too. I mean, the thing is, they, they must understand that what they are supposed to say. So, I mean, these, these questions are almost meaningless if you are rewarding the answers. Gen Z that is something we often hear about in the news. They easily quit. Yes, as I mentioned before, quitting is probably the biggest issue many companies are facing with Gen Z. Forget about staying for life, some quit within a year. What's also interesting is that some will choose not to say they quit themselves, but will use an agency that is specialized in quitting on behalf of their clients. Yes, you heard that right. Some reasons for this though are actually pretty understandable. You see, some bosses here simply don't say okay when you say you're going to quit. This is Yeah. It's like, I, I love that. Particularly in the case of clients who work at a black company, some bosses will actually try to stop their employees from quitting, becoming really aggressive, or even threatening them with some financial liability. Interestingly, though, it actually isn't new grads that make up the bulk of users for this service. One agency even revealed it was less than 20%, but that the number was rising. Now, reasons why new grads are quitting vary from things like finding out the company wasn't like what they were told during the interview to simply not getting along with their coworkers. But there is another trend fear for the future. To be honest, I mean, the thing is, you, I don't think you need a reason for quitting. You, you can just quit. But society might be total dick about it, and uh, they're probably not gonna like it. Honest, this isn't just. So you almost have to just stick around just to make it look good. It just sucks. It just sucks all around. I say jobs are pretty much unacceptable unless you ha are free to choose whether you do them. <clears throat> just Gen Z, but many of the younger generation are concerned that they aren't obtaining the skills they need for future progress or see their superior. Oh, you can't say that you don't understand. Trend, what was that? Future. To be honest, this isn't just. So what I have to say is that. In your current company, how long you plan on working? And uh, this is like three years, four to five, six to ten, over ten, and until retirement. Or you don't you don't know. I mean, probably you shouldn't say this. So if they ask you, you probably should be saying at least over ten, I suppose. It's like yeah, I'm just gonna stay here. Oh yeah, uh, until retirement. Hmm. Maybe, maybe that that's not gonna be that great either. I mean, maybe it's gonna fly in Japan, but like. If you say this, I don't know. I don't know what the right thing is. They might like to, might like to hear that. Maybe that is the right answer. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is... Mm, within three years leaving. Okay. That's about uh, three to... F I mean, four to five, and this is uh, about six to ten. And this is over ten. Let's go. Just Gen Z, but many of the younger generation are concerned that they aren't obtaining the skills they need for future progress, or see their superiors are not getting pay increases, but are just doing double the amount of work. A lot of Japanese companies but are just doing double the amount of work. Yeah, apparently Japan has a massive, massive, colossal problem with, like, ageism. Not, not, not ageism in the sense that most Western companies, or even, like, China has problem with ageism. Or, or maybe, like, uh, that kind of varies, that people might discriminate you based on age. Although I'm not really familiar with China. I mean, you might be, get respected for your age, but also they discriminate you if you are a little bit too old for the job as well. In Western countries, you mostly get discriminated for your age. But in Japan, it was like, oh my god, big, big old beans, you are so good. Even though you might like the fax machine or somewhat. I mean, if we just uh, had true meritocracy, I'm not necessarily saying that those who are old are, I don't know their stuff, they, they could. I mean, but that is uh, not a good way to evaluate it. Work. A lot of Japanese companies have put in effort to improve their work environments from trying to decrease over time to changing how superiors talk with subordinates. But even with great working conditions, if younger workers don't feel challenged, they'll look elsewhere. This is certainly. A I'm not sure that is the main reason for leaving. I mean, you, you can't really trust this. A big change from older generations, but essentially it boils down to Gen Z wanting a good work environment where they also feel that their future is secure. The power balance has started to shift in Japan. It's no longer about what. I mean, wow, that that's just sounds unreasonable. The these uh, youngins are completely deluded. You just be a slave for life, get paid the bare minimum to show up and with no hope whatsoever, 
And uh, I, well, in this age, probably can't even start a family. And if you're looking for more than that, you're just messed up. What the employees can do for the company, but what the company can do for the employee. Japanese companies that can't comply with those needs are going to continue to lose early stage workers. Okay, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. As someone who has worked in a number of Japanese companies with a lot of the younger generation, with a lot of Gen Z, honestly speaking, I can see their drive, I can see their passion, I can see that they actually do want to work, but they also want to improve their skills. They are scared, they're worried about what is gonna happen to them. Economically speaking, Japan is not in the best of places, and they know it. A lot of the Gen Z know it, and they're expecting things from companies now. They want to see that those companies are going to provide for their futures. So, yeah, Japanese companies are just going to have to step up. That's basically wars, poverty, climate. I could say some kind of a, a feel good. Uh, conclusion uh, as this guy might be implying but the, the, the true reality is that it's not gonna be like oh yeah you know these guys maybe maybe we should pay them more and improve the work cir circumstances i doubt it's gonna be that it's gonna be like how can we dominate these guys into accepting the status quo because it sure as hell favors us